Next up, we are talking about the announcement from British Cycling yesterday that their new sponsor is Shell, which has caused quite a lot of consternation. So I'm joined by Dave. Hello. Uh, Jack. Hello. And we're really lucky to be joined by Casper Hughes. Casper, do you want to um, tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello. Um, yeah, so I am, these days, I'm an, an, a climate and environmental protester. Uh, I'm, well, actually, we're referring to it. I'm in civil resistance at the moment, been arrested numerous times, blocked Rupert Murdoch's printing press, done all sorts of things, glued myself to the Last Supper. Um, but before that, in, uh, I was deeply involved in cycling. I founded and run Rollerpalooza, the static cycling company for 10 years, founded the Urban Hill Climb. Uh, Muddy Hell, the cyclocross event down at Herne Hill, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, so Casper is pretty well qualified to discuss this, I'd say. Um, so, I mean, Casper, maybe you could give us some uh, your perspective first. I mean, what was your what was your perspective when you first heard the news? <laughs> that was unfortunate timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how long did that pause go on for? Uh, well, should we just carry on? Yeah, just on. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's so fine. I mean, you know, uh, having been in, involved in cycling for so long, um, I, I really wasn't that surprised. And at the same time, what the hell are they doing? You know, we've, we've got barely decades of safe, secure society left because of Shell, and they have decided to take money from them. It's utterly insane. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a really odd choice for a, an organization that is meant to be promoting cycling as a sustainable me method of transport. Um, I mean, Jack, what do you think, what do you think their rationale for doing it is? Well, it's, it's, it is the funding, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're, they're not, I mean, it's a big organization and I can't like, you know, everyone was saying, oh, it's tone deaf. It's like, how could you have done this? But like, I think that, they have and they, they like they must British cycling must have anticipated some backlash some I don't know I mean did, were they short-sighted enough to think that they wouldn't get this much I, I don't know I don't we, I can't know I don't know we haven't um, managed to get a statement from British cycling. interestingly though uh, we did have someone who messaged us earlier who um said that um because there's obviously a, there's there's a lot of people emailing british cycling to cancel their memberships and he he called up to cancel and the and the the assistant on the other end said oh is this about shell so uh, interesting yes <laughs> that they weren't I, I, like the guy there they're, they're basically trying to gather evidence i think the people who were and you know that uh the people in the communications departments at british cycling and those people answering the phones won't have had anything to do with this decision so it's not it's not their fault um so i just don't know i mean it is it is baffling i mean i know like it, it's a weird one because yeah it, it, they're they're british cycling they're supposed to represent all cyclists to some level at, at some but that they they're representing all cyclists at one level then on the other hand they're like trying to run a world-class performance program and that costs money um so I, I don't know who the, the last major partner was HSBC. Uh, now they've they've gone to Shell. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't think there's. I mean, they must have they must have factored this in and just thought. But I don't know. I don't know who was making those decisions, and we we can't be sure. Mm. I mean, Dave, we've we've obviously seen a huge amount of backlash. Do you think that? I mean, do you think that British Cycling are likely to? kind of maybe change their mind back out of this, but bearing in mind the amount of damage that it seems to have done in such a short amount of time. I mean, I think it's unlikely that they will, yeah. given that they will have put a lot of time and effort into securing the funding for the things they want to do. I mean, what Jack has said is is certainly true. There's, there's very much a dichotomy between the performance-related part of, of British cycling and the community-related part. And sometimes it's very difficult to see the two things as the same entity. And I'm sure there's an argument to be had that 
the people that are going after the money for the funding for for the performance side for you know getting the Olympic athletes up to speed and stuff should really be a separate entity and they go after their own funding and probably in terms of the people they can get that from it's less of a contentious issue I mean the, the main the main issue for a lot of people I think is going to be just that the op- the optics of it could not be worse could they if you like if you were to make a list of the people that were the <laughs> most kind of anti the anti the community environment active spaces kind of agenda that you would think british cycling would espouse then you know oil companies are top of the list aren't they along with oppressive regimes i expect but they don't give out as much money but um it it just seems like such a strange choice that you you wonder what happened in the meetings where they were discussing what they were going to do with the fallout because they must have known this would happen. And they say it must, they must have been like that. They, they will have invested a lot into it. It was very, the, you know, um, I know it's been a year of U turns in, in politics, but I can't see that, like, there's going to, there will be, there must be too much money on the table because they'd have known this is going to happen. I mean, how many members do you think they have banked on losing through it? Like 1,000, 5,000? <laughs> I just don't know. Like, what's, um, yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's interesting from from what from Dave from what you were just saying there, because this isn't just this isn't actually just a choice of British Cycling. This is also a choice of Shell. Now, what are they getting out? What are they getting out of this? I don't really understand because there aren't really many people who would say would would say, oh, Shell is sponsoring British Cycling. Let's go and buy some more oil. I can't really see where. I can't really see the synergy there. You know, when it came to, you know, Ineos is obviously an oil producer, um, but nobody knew who Ineos was, and now they do. So it kind of made a bit more sense. But with Shell, everyone knows who they are. They're the guys that are destroying our planet. Why, 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 are they, why have they decided to do this? It's such a bizarre choice. I mean, it's just greenwashing, isn't it? I mean, it, it, this is this is um, greenwashing on steroids. You know, Shell's marketing budget is larger than their budget for renewables. Uh, you know, uh, investing in renewables projects, and and you can bet your bottom dollar that we will see adverts uh, appearing over the next year with uh, people cycling and British cycling involved. And you know, it's it, this is just a horrific greenwashing that is going to basically destroy our, our kids' future. And do, do you know much, Casper, about that? Because I've I've seen about Shell's. Um, I mean, I haven't looked into it, but, the, but they've made promises in the past about net zero, carbon mm-hmm. neutral, this and the other, and then have like explicitly in. There's been leaks from from their board meetings that have, they've explicitly uh, privately said we're we're not actually sticking to those targets. <laughs> uh, so I mean. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you what, what can you give? Is there any examples of like um, you know targets well, they, um, they've said they're going to hit in the past and of yeah? So they 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 a uh, recent proportion of spending for renewables they're not going to meet, which was uh, six billion pounds. And so I mean, but this goes back to nineteen ninety one when they um, uh, they th- th- there was they commissioned a study in nineteen ninety one that showed that the com- that, that basically into um, the uh, global warming and greenhouse gas crisis the, the climate and ecological crisis basically the climate side of it anyway and um the study the study that they commissioned showed that they understood the nature of their input into the climate crisis back in 1991 and they've not changed tax since you know they were even fighting that um the uh, what the ju- dutch law courts uh, judgment that came last year that, you know they've been trying to to, to battle that because that includes scope three uh, emissions. So all of their emissions that, that come from being from burning fuel that they're selling and they're, they're desperately trying to fight that at the moment as well. But yeah, I mean, so what, but directly between 2010 and 2018, they spent 1% of their investments on renewables. And it was, yes. And like I say, they've, they've failed to, to meet their target of 6 billion pounds, which is their current target. I mean, that when you think about the amount of, especially, God, this is all very topical, isn't it? Especially now with the um, 
you know, with the, with the massive increases in profits that they're going to be seeing, you'd have thought that £6 billion is actually kind of almost peanuts to them now, really. It seems bizarre that they're not. It almost seems like it's, um, yeah, I, I don't want to say deliberate, but it seems kind of odd that they've, that they've chosen not to do that. They, they're currently spending more on marketing than they are on investing in renewables. I mean, it, the statement from David Bunch, Shell's UK County Chair, we're very proud to become an official partner of British Cycling. This partnership reflects the shared ambitions of Shell UK and British Cycling to get to net zero in the UK, as well as encouraging low and zero carbon forms of transport. So, like, are they saying that that they are going to encourage it through their marketing and advertising budget, but then the other side of the business is going to be it doesn't really make sense, does it? Because they're saying, like, this partnership is, you know, to they've they've gone into this partnership to encourage people to not buy their products and to harm their business. Um, I, I don't know. It's baffling it's to me. Pretty, it's a pretty weird one. I don't really, yeah. It's, it it doesn't really make sense from either side because, yeah, as I said. No one's going to go out and buy more oil because they've got their name on the side of a you know, somebody's helmet. Very odd. No, but you know, it's just an opportunity to say, look how cuddly we are. We're helping all these nice cyclists do their nice cycling things, and getting your name in in the papers, isn't it? Putting the adverts out, uh, continuing the narrative that oil companies are uh, invested in our net zero um, future when. The numbers suggest that that's not the case. Yeah. I mean, if they are, if they are, then and and the government suddenly allows another round of licensing for North Sea gas exploration, for example, presumably the oil companies that are on a net zero path will not be taking up any of those licenses. So, it'd be interesting to see where Shell sit in that uh, in the grand scheme of things. There, I suspect that they'll be going after them. They do. Yeah. 130 new licenses in 900 areas that this government has just opened up, you know, after, our, our, especially when the UN and the IE, the International Energy Agency are saying that, um, uh, that we need to have no new fossil fuel licenses in order to meet. I mean, we're going to blast over 1.5 degrees of warming anyway, but, you know, in order to try and get there as quickly as possible, we need to have no new licenses. Mm. None. I mean, Casper, you're obviously, yeah, I see you introduced yourself. Um, it's kind of, let's say, civilly disobedient. Um, how, let's say that you are, let's say, you know, we've got quite a few of our listeners are, will be members of British Cycling. What, what do you think people can do if they're not happy with this decision, kind of beyond resigning their membership? Um, oh, blimey, how far do you want to take this? Um, <laughs> ultimately, you know, what I would, uh, what I would really hope for is for people to step into, uh, into the civil resistance basically. And, you know, and, and it, it, in order to achieve the changes, the radical nature of the changes we need to see as quickly as possible, we, we really do need, you know, like suffragette style actions. And, and unfortunately we know that comes with, um, uh, without much public support, you know they were they were hated, um, and and um, and successful, and it's the, it's the success that we need. Otherwise, there won't be you know there won't be people to to, to have any more success. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a it is a it's a. But, but you know, I was just just thinking about this, I can remember when was it the tour series was sponsored by Ovo. Yeah, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember doing some work for for them, and remember going to the launch, and and I, I was sitting there thinking, this is great. You know what? This is this is this is marrying of a um, of active transport ultimately the the professional speedy part of active transport promotion. And a renewables-only energy company, and I was, just, you know, I was just thinking, this is a brilliant trajectory. Can we build from this? Obviously, the answer is no. We've we've done exactly what the government's done, and they're, and they're heading done a, a U-turn, which are very in vogue, aren't they? And just turned around and going exactly in the other direction to make everything worse. Yeah, I mean, but- I, what, 
it just it raises questions about the, the, like um, financially what uh, what kind of that's what I mean to make that decision. Um, like how many how many jobs have been saved by by them having this partnership? You know, I mean, there's uh, it might, like I don't know. I don't. I'm not feeling sorry for the people at the head of British Cycling, but like clearly they wouldn't have made it. They would have anticipated this. <laughs> Um, and they, they that's been they want they run a world class performance program, so um, they, they have to they, they have to take the money. Did they actually have to? But they, I guess that's what's the most that would be the most disappointing thing if there were other sponsors on the table and they went with Shell. But we'll never know that that um, if they do U turn, then I'll be very pleasantly surprised. But I just can't see it happening. I suspect that. They re- they British Cycling really really need the investment. Yeah, yeah. it shouldn't come. Obviously, there's principles. And, uh, yeah, I, I agree. You know, I I've, I really struggle to see them doing any sort of U turn. But there, you know, there, there is there is there is a link. Obviously, the um, the chair of um, British Cycling, uh, Frank Slevin, was the former head of global investments for HSBC, and HSBC are one of Europe's largest fossil fuel funders. So, you know, they, they, he will have had very good. I assume he will have had very good contacts with with Shell, and obviously HSBC were were the previous sponsor as well, weren't they, from 2017 to 2024? Mm. So, you know, it's 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 fairly obvious where it's come from. It's quite a cosy deal, isn't it? But yeah, I don't know. What I don't know is is how much that sponsorship package is worth and what other sponsors would be able to offer that sort of funding. Yeah, because it's a good point. Because at the at the other end of the you know, the reasons why they've been chosen, we are in a situation at the moment where companies are cutting back on their investments because we are expecting to go into a recession. Whilst at the same time, the companies who have the most money are the oil companies. So it could, it wouldn't be, it w- it wouldn't be unthinkable to think that maybe they were kind of the only ones available. It's just so explicitly like shocking, isn't it? Like I've, I've, I've looked here at, um, I'm looking here at the British Athletics sponsor just to see like, you know, are they, are they getting unfairly pillared? I know, I know like, like football, for example, it's, it's just, uh, I, I am a, a football fan. I'm a Wolves supporter. And you look at the uh, moral, um, you know, <laughs> some of the, some of the, uh, companies and um regimes involved in football is absolutely shocking so is like cycling being a bit unfairly targeted british cycling being unfairly targeted but um i mean british athletics with uk sport nike people have their opinions about nike muller large um corporation uh swim england speedo Labara Mobile, but none of them. Like, <laughs> I don't know if if uh, if if UK Athletics was sponsored by a cigarette company, <laughs> like if they yeah. announced that, then it would be like, oh my god, you can't do that. Or or Swim England was sponsored, but uh, I don't I don't want to say a horrible example of uh, um, uh, there. But um, yeah, but um, it, it's it just seems like absolute chalk and cheese, I guess, doesn't it? Like a oil company sponsoring cycling, even if it had have been like you know, a despotic regime. It's like, I don't think it's actually an exaggeration to say that it w- it, um, it would have been like less shocking than this, you know, just from that, but not necessarily my opinion, but just from a, oh my God, you actually went there perspective. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very bizarre choice. A ve- it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a directory. When you, when your sponsor is directly contradictory to what your, you know, part of your mission statement, it doesn't, it's just really odd. Really it will be interesting. It will be interesting to see what happens in the next few months because there, there obviously is a groundswell of opinion that says this is not an acceptable marriage, even if it is a marriage of convenience, and we we won't back it. And you know, people are phoning up and cancelling their memberships. People are resigning from British Cycling at the moment because of this. Like has already been said, it's not. A huge surprise because HSBC, the previous sponsor, are in some ways equally culpable and possibly like in some ways even more culpable. And that's the kind of landscape that 
the that British cycling has been in. But I think it's very much kind of it's the bare facedness of I was gonna say it's not so in your face, HSBC, yeah. it's not there saying, you know, we drill oil. It's like we yeah, we we finance it. But uh it's just yeah, like I said, it's it's the it's just the principle, isn't it? And this, that it's in your face. And I think about the athletes as well. Like, what if you know any athlete who, what if athletes start boycotting and uh, the the yeah. and saying, oh, I'm not going to have shell on my sleeve, you know, because I'll get too much shit for it on Instagram, you know, that they have to think about their welfare of their staff. Is it the poor people in the communications department who sent us the press release yet? Like, you know. It was a fairly quiet afternoon yesterday until that happened, and then um, it's like, oh my god! Like we, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have a full strength news team yesterday, so it was like, uh, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, you know, did this have to happen today? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, British Cycling have have lost; they they've got no moral integrity left, have they? What? How does that affect the? How does that affect the top level athletes? How does that affect the likes of you know? I'm not going to name any of them. I, I, I know, I still know some of them. I'm not going to name any of them here, but, you know, they're going to have to be cycling around with a, with, you know, they, they, their national body has no moral integrity whatsoever. How does that affect them? How does that affect their racing? How does that affect their interaction with other athletes at that level when they're at the Tour de France? Yeah, and we've yeah. already seen some, we've already That's seen some challenges. ex-athletes being very vocal about this already. What do you think Chris Boardman is saying? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Interestingly, he hasn't said anything. Um, I was I did have a, a quick look, but I, that's not. I'm not saying he, he might be very, very. He's probably very, very busy with his various other great things that he does in the world. I don't know. He's uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't notice that he said anything on his social media or, or otherwise. But yeah, but there were some interesting net. Like uh, I know there's there's an open letter um going around and there there's some interesting names there like people who are either currently even people who are currently affiliated with British cycling on their um university professors um and yeah some ex athletes well at least well, I know one or two quite prominent ex athletes have have spoken out already yeah it's um it's an interesting one it'll be interesting to see if um because obviously if you want to race in the UK you have to be a member of British Cycling. So it will be interesting to see if this precipitates another movement, another racing movement in the UK that doesn't that isn't mm. easily affiliated. I don't know if that I don't know if that's even possible. And the fact that, you know, racing's dying on its arse in the UK anyway. So I can't imagine that splitting it into two things is going to be helpful. But I can't imagine that it's not going to be a conversation that isn't happening in you know, various clubs around the country right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean that. Like the the other. I mean, the, a lot of people w- we were seeing that the people who were cancelling their British cycling memberships and I'll join Cycling UK instead. You can join your local cycling campaign. But I mean that that is the other. Like the, these Cycling UK don't have a that they they don't have to fund a, a performance <laughs> program. So th- th- there is that that side of it. But uh, but. As we said, the barefacedness of it, like you know, it's just so it's so um, in your face. Like you know, we are being sponsored by Shell. Yeah, Christ, they're not even the lead sponsor either, are they? I don't think. Well, who's going to be the lead? Like, I don't know. This uh, North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said before, I think it, in the chalk, like if we're talking just complete chalk and cheese, that that's not even as shocking you know yeah yeah it's true they're not as directly contradictory cool right um i think that's good i don't want it to run too long cool thanks casper that was really good